Okay. So, where we last left was you guys had just turned in your job. The last thing you guys did was take Frank Anders out on for a night on the town and help keep him safe. Um, everybody seemed to be pleased with the results of the job. Badger was definitely happy. That Frank seemed to be really happy and enjoyed hanging out with you guys. And you guys went your separate ways. Um, House, Yonkers, and Malibu went and watched the game together and did some fun betting. But um, uh, a week has gone by. Uh, it's Monday, June 9th. Seattle is in the throes of hot and humid summer. You guys are at your various places of residency. Uh, Davros is probably, you know, finding little places here and there on the street to, to stay. And uh, Davros, um, by the way, after he was done with his job, with the job with the team, you went back to where your bike was, your 10-speed, and uh, um, when you got there, it was missing its wheels, uh, it was missing the seat, it was missing the handlebars, in fact, it was missing the entire body of the bike, and uh, all you had were two bike pedals that were tied up to a post with the now broken bike chain that you used to lock up your bike. Oh man. Frickin' barons. Well, it was just a Craigslist find anyway. So as you walk the streets now with your two sad broken bike pedals on a chain, uh, you make it through the week and it's June 9th in Yonkers you get a comlink call from Johannes de Geer. Greeting, uh, greetings of the forest, all day. Hey, how you doing, Yonkers? Eh, street hasn't spit me out yet. Things are tight, though. What's up? Not that I'm glad to hear that things are tight, but I am glad to be able to say that I may have a solution to your problem. This my line of work, or is this just uh, general run and work? Well, it's uh. Well, I heard that you have fallen into potentially another team. Is that true? Something like that. Well, why don't you get them together? Uh, meet me at the usual spot. Um, actually, let's not do that. Let's meet in a different location. Um, how about Twenton's in Puyallup? Um, if you could bring yourself and your uh, new acquaintances, I may have a bit of a problem that I need your help with. All right, I'll uh, put the phone calls out. All right, thanks, Chummer, and uh, hey, it's been it's been too long, a uh, couple months. Uh, it's good to hear you again. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe after we're done, we can catch a drink. How fast you need them there? Let's say lunch, actually. How about how about I meet you there at twelve thirty? Alright, I'll uh, make some fast phone calls then. Thanks. See you then, Ome. And after getting off the phone, Yonkers will promptly uh, put on a speed dial to his lovely fixer, Badger. Oi, Badger, you, uh, you, you there? Hey, Yonkers, how's it going? Decent enough, decent enough. Um... Just got a phone call from an old friend. Uh, might have some work. All right, that sounds great. Um, don't have everybody's com code. Uh, could you do me the uh, little largesse of uh, putting the word out, getting everybody in touch with me? Right, sure. I'll give them a call, and uh, you just want me to give them your info and have them call you? Yeah, tell them that uh, about noon we have a meetup at uh, Twenton's. All oh, right, right, okay. Well, sounds great. I'll give them, I'll give them ever, I'll give the team a call, and uh, I'll have them either meet meet in Twinton's at twelve thirty. If they have any questions, give you a call. Does that sound right? Sounds good. Uh, All, right. All right. Figure this will be a. Uh, don't know any of the hard details yet, but uh, just knowing why I'm being contacted, it might be a uh, wet work or something like it. Right, right. Well, I'll let him know. Sounds good. I'll uh, be waiting there. All right. Well, I'll see you around, Yonkers. Yeah, yeah. Stay frosty. Uh, in turn, Davros 
uh, haunted house in case you'll each get a phone call from Badger and if you do in answer the call he'll tell you he'll relate that information to you that uh, you have a meeting uh, for a potential job that Yonkers probably lined up for you at Twenton's in Puyallup uh, that if you have any questions that you can give uh, that you can give Yonkers a call and they give you his information if or Badger gives you his information if you don't already have it well I'm going to need to uh, call uh, <clears throat> Yonkers then uh, because I do not have a bike anymore, and I, I'm assuming I won't be able to get there on foot by 12:30. So I'm gonna so go I'm... ahead and call Yonkers or get call the number that uh, was provided to me. Who's this? Um, hey man, it's it's uh, Davros. I was I was the the mage kid that uh, I'm uh, the you know the nephew of Malibu. Yeah, yeah, um, Greenhorn. Gotcha. Hey, uh, well, uh, you know, I just got the the call from um, Mr. Badger, and uh, you know, I I'd like to meet you guys down there, but I'm all the way up in you know in downtown near the school near the university, and uh, men, I don't know who did it, but somebody you know took my bike, and all they left me were the stupid pedals, and um, so I don't think I'm gonna meet, be able to meet y'all guys down there, you know, in time. So, I mean, is there any way like you can get a ride for me or something? Uh, didn't you get a paycheck? Uh, I mean, kinda. I mean, you know, I, I, have, I don't really have a place to stay, so I've just been kinda staying in some cheap hotels and stuff. I don't, I don't really have too much left. Yonkers will, you know, look up at this guy, kind of roll his eyes, uh, say Drek under his breath a few times, and then uh, come back to the calm. Alright, um, listen. Just, uh, Ping me your location, and I'll have a, uh, I'll get a taxi to come pick you up. You just wait there. Sure thing, sure thing, Mr. Yonkers. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you just do that, kid. Davros will ping his location downtown to Mr. Yonkers. Mr. Yonkers will make a underhand, you know, again, sarcastic comments about Mr. Yonkers was his dad. And uh, pull up his com link, go through it, and uh, get a was it get a taxi to drive uh, chauffeur this kid from one lo his location to the uh, the meetup. It's about ten minutes, no more than ten minutes after your phone call with Yonkers Davros, a uh, taxi pulls up on the side of the street, right next to you, and kind of honks his horn. Uh, all right, Davros will just kind of look in and uh, say, "You here for me?" There's nobody inside the taxi. It's an automated taxi. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Johnny Cab. <laughs> Davros will just uh, assume it's there for him then and hop in. All right. Once you get inside, the door closes and you hear a voice that says, in sort of a calming. Uh, but still somewhat mechanical way says your destination is Twentons in Puyallup in the Seattle Metroplex your arrival will be in approximately 27 minutes what time is it right now? it's it's about 10 10 in the morning okay alrighty please Go. enjoy the ride <laughs> All right, I uh, I enjoy the ride. Case uh, jumps on his bike. This time he's uh, dressed in blue jeans, a uh, pair of just leather boots, and a jacket, a leather jacket, and uh, heads his way there. After getting the message, Hauser's going to just change into a, a pair of everyday clothes underneath his uh, Urban Explorer jumpsuit and helmet, and he's going to. Uh, get into his Ford Americar knockoff, uh, which is a German model, just called a VW Autobahn, and he's going to slowly uh, rig into and drive himself down uh, since he's literally a 15-minute drive away from the Twentons. What is uh, Twentons rep within the shadow community? It's, it's kind of neutral. It's not known for being super Shadowrun runner friendly, but that's not to say it's 
not friendly to Shadowrunners. It's just not, you know, known as being a Shadowrunner hangout, so to speak. Um, it's just a restaurant. People meet there. People eat there. It's kind of a family rent restaurant. It's shaman owned. Um. All right. So it's just local business. Um. I'm going to assume that uh, the owner owner is an elf. The owner's a human. Roger, Roger. So uh, we all get there, and I guess we wait till uh, our Johnson shows up. It's good to see you again, gentlemen. Likewise. What's the uh, What's the good news? Well, oh, the good my wife's news got me that... uh, practicing with firearms, for running around with people like you. You at least know which end of the gun makes the loud noises now. Oh, now I do. That's good because we may have the bang bang come up on this next job if uh, things go in favor of a little bit of chaos. Just remember if the gun jams, look down the barrel to see if it's stuck. Yeah, I've been taught a little better than that. Right, well, and make yeah. sure you blow in the magazine to make sure there's no dust, just like old uh, Sega Genesis cartridge. All right, well, when you guys get there, it's about 12.30. Davros has been there for probably a good two hours hanging out. Uh, Hauser's going to take advantage of the fact that Davros is hanging out in a bar without Malibu and make sure that Davros never has an empty beer bottle. <laughs> when you guys get to... When you guys go inside, it's pretty much a your typical family kind of restaurant. Uh, it's a little grungy, you know, because it is Puyallup. It's... it's uh, it's dim lighting. It's probably not as clean as, as some other restaurants that Davros might be used to, or even Case. But uh, those of you who've spent a significant amount of time in the Barrens in Puyallup or, or in slums around the world, like in Berlin, well, you're used to this kind of a scene, and it's a pretty nice pretty nice establishment, a good place to come and get something to eat. Uh, wunderbar. Soy has never looked so delicious. Johannes de Geer is... Uh, easily spotted, he's in a corner booth in the back of the restaurant. Uh, Yonkers will definitely make it, well, yeah, Yonkers will make his way over there once everybody else is around. You guys are introduced to uh, a man who stands up. He, uh, his name is Johannes de Geer, and he, at least that's how he introduces himself. He introduces himself, hello, my name is Johannes de Geer. Um, I'm acquainted with uh, your our mutual friend here, Yonkers. Um, he tells me, or I've heard, that you guys have recently worked with Yonkers. Here, have a seat. Thank you. Yonkers obviously has a uh, seat himself. As uh, Case sits down, he's uh, this Case scans the room in AR, uh, and just paying attention and kind of keeping track of. Uh, the different icons that are popping up and around. Uh, before sitting down, Hauser wants to use his uh, bug scanner just to make sure there aren't any ambient listening devices. And I've got a rating five bug scanner. All right, go ahead and roll it for me. Let me know how many successes you get. All right, you don't find any bugs. Doesn't seem that there are any going on. Hauser sits down, satisfied for the moment, and puts on a genial expression before introducing himself. Dagir sits down as well and unbuttons the button of his coat, and he straightens himself up, pulls out of his pocket a small device that uh, any of you familiar with these things will recognize as a white noise generator, and he flips it on and you hear the characteristic uh, noise of a white noise generator, and he says, all right, now we can speak with relative privacy. So, and, uh, Sparathiel, uh, Yonkers will address him as, you know, what can the forest do on behalf of the lost? He smiles in recognition of your, uh, use of Sparathiel, and he says, well, I've got a sort of a job proposition for you guys. It involves helping out a business that me and my interested parties would like to assist. The business is a talismonger shop that's opened up in Puyallup. 
and they seem to be having a little bit of a tr some trouble with some local gangers. I see. The the gangers have been causing a lot of trouble for the store owner, and the store owner is a friend of my organization. He kind of he kind of almost half winks knowingly to you Yonkers. But but the way he winks is in like a friendly way. Like he's not really trying to be secretive. So uh these gangers, do we just need to put the uh, fear of God in them, or uh, is this going to be a more firm and firm hand uh, situation? Now, I like to leave that up. Situations like this, I like to leave up to the specialists in charge of performing such work. Um, what I will tell you now is that this is a low-level gang, uh, but they are aggressive they've caused some problems for this store owner they've they've harassed the store they've uh, harassed customers and most recently they have uh, violently attacked the store owner himself uh, when this happened he contacted me I'm not sure what to do and I told him that I'd help him out and that's why I'm talking to you <clears throat> uh, excuse me, sir, but uh, do you, how many gangers are there exactly? Well, I'm not sure of the exact number of the size of the gang altogether. Um, I believe that five gangers attacked the man outside of his store, but I can. There are certainly more than that. Do you have any idea what the motive is? Is it purely commercial or something social, perhaps racial? I'm not entirely sure. The uh, The gang is, like I said, a small local gang. They're called the Fire Snakes. And um, I don't know about what type of local connections they have, but uh, it seems to be perhaps like many gangers, they're just trying to establish territory. If it was something more, would you be interested in the information? Absolutely, always. At the mention of the name, Case immediately does a uh, search on the name. With a name like the Fire Snake, sounds like they're kind of a whiz kid gang. Is that uh, accurate? or Not that I'm aware of. I think they're just a typical thuggish kind of uh, kind of street gang they're not particularly overtly focused on on magic or anything um, Yonkers is going to rack his brain while Case racks his keyboard and uh, see if the uh, fire snakes have ever come across his radar alright well how about Case let's get him to do a quick data search, see what he can find up just on the fly during this meeting. Case, just a quick matrix search. You're able to you're able to find some information on the fire snakes. They're they're not an old gang, but they're not particularly new. They're they've got a small territory in Puyallup. They do some drug dealing on the streets. But other than that, other than that, you're not able to find a whole lot of information. Probably, uh, probably your street contacts. If you guys have any street contacts, they might be able to know more. But just a quick data search on on during the meeting isn't going to turn up anymore. All right, I uh, forward on that information to the to the group. James, are you back yet? Yep, I'm back. You have a knowledge skill that has to do with uh, street gang or gangs or or anything like that. Looks like I got three successes. All right, yeah, as you know that you've heard of the Fire Snakes, it, it appears that they may have been heard to be working with the Ancients lately. Um, I kind of quirk an eyebrow once that crosses. Um, Johannes, uh, I thought the uh, Lais and... Uh, the uh, ancients were kind of uh, in a ceasefire at the moment, playing nice. Mm, so I take it you've heard of the fire snakes before. Passing, but uh, always good to keep an ear to the ground. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the Lace uh, 
historically has a ceasefire is a good way to put it with the ancients. We kind of stay out of their business with the agreement that they're going to stay out of ours. We don't like it when our interests overlap. Apparently the fire snakes have been, we've heard the same thing, that the ancients have been talking to the fire snakes, trying to come up with an agreement. The fire snakes are willing to do some work for them so that the ancients don't push them out of what territory that they have. Um, I don't know necessarily if that's connected. To be honest, I haven't looked very deeply into it. I have a lot of things going on right now. The fire snakes have been pushing my talismonger friend a little bit harder lately, causing a lot of trouble. And, uh, well, we've agreed to help this talismonger out with the assurance that this talismonger friend of ours will assist us with some of our Tal's Lenging and Arcane Smuggling operations in return. We've told him we'll protect him, and that's why we've given you a call. It would be good to find out what's going on with the Fire Snakes, but um, but that's not, that's not what you're being hired to do. You're being hired to put an end to whatever problems that they're having, and also to help keep him and his business safe in the meantime. Well, Mr. Degir, Air Degir, where is it? Uh... I, I will accept the job, and you say you hope that this uh, talismonger might help you with smuggling in the future. Uh, I'm somewhat of a uh, smuggling expert over in the Allied German state, so if that comes to fruition, please also keep me in mind for future jobs. So he says, okay, uh, Mr. House, you're on board. Do I have the rest of you as well, Yonkers? No, I'm always in. No, I have to be the uh, the old miser here and ask what the paycheck is, just on a formality. Of course, I I would think that you'd been losing your edge if you hadn't have asked. The pay would be nine thousand New Yen total. All right. Well, that uh, tends to indicate that you want these people scared more than dead. All that we care about is that our talismonger friend is able to have a thriving business when this is over. Understood. If this goes well, there will be more work in the future. I know about, Yonkers, your aspirations with the Lesa, and I know I've promised you to some help in the past. Some things are falling into place, and I can probably get you some future work with our organization if this goes well. Understood. All right, well, I am glad to hear that you are on board. The Talismonger shop that I need you guys to help with is a place called Rasputin's Secret. It's a little shop in, in Puyallup. Uh, I'll give you the address here. It's the corner of 260th Street East and 70th Avenue East. Go on there, find the store owner, tell him that Degir sent you and he'll know why you're there. He should be able to give you some more information. Any other questions? I think I'm uh, good. Is there any sort of timetable you want this cleared up by? It's hard to say. There's no strict timetable. Uh, he is having an ongoing problem with harassment at least and apparently violence at worst that needs to be mitigated as soon as possible so if you don't mind heading over there at, as soon as you're able to to at least talk to him and start maybe watching over the place if he needs that um, and just start working with him immediately but uh, I imagine this would probably at least take a little bit of time a couple days maybe longer depending on how you want to go about it of course anyone else have anything um, no, I, I think this sounds like it's a pretty pretty standard job, honestly. We, we just go do a little bit of investigation, and then conflict is inevitable, so it just depends on whether we choose to do it near the shop or we try to trail them back to some sort of gang or turf. Davos just heard 9,000 New Yen, so he's, that's all he can think about right now. So he's good with it. Hey, uh, Johannes, uh... Might have a bit of a shopping list I might ask you to uh, toss in. Or rather, just two things I might want from you. Mm, yes, what, do you, what is it? 
need two frags. Well, it's not necessarily something that I can get you directly. I might be able to get you in touch with somebody who can if you need it soon. Otherwise, I would just suggest uh, going to wherever you get that type of thing. Anyway, if you could uh, do me the small largesse of covering it, I can, uh, with those two, probably make sure that you will uh, never again have problems with these kids. Give me a give me a negotiation roll, and what's your loyalty with him? Loyalty three. Yeah, throw that in as a dice pool modifier. Got four successes. He says, "Yeah, that's not a problem. Uh, just let me know how much it costs, and I'll throw that the cost in of that as well." Anything else, or can I count on you guys to handle the rest of this on your own? Consider it done. I believe we can take care of this. It's the kaput. Right, Let's do it. Up. He stands up. He turns off the white noise generator and buttons his coat. As he does, he picks up his drink and he finishes the rest of it in a quick gulp and then nods and walks out. Well, uh, we should probably go somewhere else to uh, start planning uh, what to do next for our uh, extracurricular activity. Uh, my place is not that far away if you want somewhere locally that we can plan and just get moving. Um, I'm going to need to go back to uh, my place and at least pick up my stuff, and then I can meet you there. Okay, Hauser uh, transmits his address over Comlink over to Case. Yonkers is going to uh, get a taxi over the crime ball real quick. Hey, I'll just uh, I'll just grab a, a ride with you, Mr. House, if that's okay. Uh, wunderbar, Herr uh, Witch Doctor. You can ride uh, in the back, uh, Premier style. Ah, oh, sweet, thanks. So, Case runs to the house, runs in, grabs his uh, armored jacket or an armored vest since uh, he's, there's going to be some action and make sure his deck is all powered up. And as he's running out, uh, his wife screams out to him, Honey, you want your gun? So he says, Damn, turn around, grabs his gun. Runs back out of the house, gets on his bike, and uh, heads over to Hauser's. What would you do without her? You'd be a mess without her. He would be a mess without her. Looks like there is some light smog today in Seattle. Mmm, delicious. Um, well, I do have the uh, armor that I know, uh, old Johnny. Oh, old Johnny's a, a good old southern boy. Alright. All right. So, uh, Johnny go, or, uh, Yonkers goes in to the only gunsmith worth his salt in all of Seattle and uh, knocks on the, his little shack gunsmithing shop in uh, cr the crime mall. Hello, hello, hello. How can I help you? Hey, uh, Johnny. Uh, Yonkers. Oh, Yonkers. So, uh, have a bit of a shopping list. Uh, needed to know if you could give me a bit of a help. Well, you tell me what you're looking for, and uh, I'll tell you if I can help you out. Looking for a couple little uh, frag grenades. Do you uh, have any? Do you have any pineapples hanging around? Hmm. Well, I don't know. I mean, those aren't the kind of things that I like to just keep out in the open. You know what I mean? You have to have something. I know somebody in here who does. I mean, uh, th this is uh, kind of your biz. And I have uh, willing to throw a decent chunk of cash to get them fast. All right, all right. Um, well, how much how much money are we talking about here? And I might be able to make a no promises, of course, but I might be able to help you out. Well, let's, uh, let's start... Uh, I need two, so let's start at 400. All right. Well, uh, that sounds promising. All right, Alex character. Um, two of them, base cost would be 200, so you're basically adding 100% of that, so that's like four extra dice. Uh, roll your negotiation plus charisma and add four dice to that and let's see what happens. Also, add an extra die for your loyalty. So, uh, four successes. All right. Well, Johnny says, 
Well, for a price like that, I'll tell you what. You come with me right over to here, and he kind of looks around, and uh, he leads you over to a, a box that kind of looks like a table, and he pulls back a, like a heavy fabric tarp that's over it, and he's got you know a couple of different types of grenades there, and he says, I think I can help you out. See, and this is where I come to a good old honest gentleman like yourself. As honest as they come. I uh, transfer over the credits, uh, pocket both of those, and uh, we'll do a quick run back by my place, pick up the magical murder bag, 